We can show the nation how ill-informed many of our elected representatives are about the financial system. I, I think that's always a helpful thing. I recently thing. watched the GameStop hearings for something I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about the most unaware group of people who have... Did uh, Roaring Kitty know anything I mean, you know either? I mean... He, yeah, well, Roaring Kitty had a... He had a rap on GameStop. He had a rap. He has a rap on rap. Chewy also. It hasn't gone as well yet. Well, you know, Chewy, David, was up a lot. For you were out. Did you... $243 million. Now, I, I assume he's getting some leverage on that. I don't know. A uh, quarter billion dollars. Look, he had it. 6.6%. Did you watch the movie? He crushed it. <laughs> I did he was also really movie. good at Stonehill. What, in the track? He ran track. He did. The, um, the guy you made can see the, money. He was early. Stock has not performed uh, any well, better Chewy's since little, he got Chewy's, involved. He should have gotten involved at 19 when uh, when they came on the show and just crushed it. Assume it. He just crushed it. He said, look, because uh, I'm like a huge dog lover, you know, at the, yeah, you know, my dog, NVIDIA. Someone thanked me this weekend, David, for naming my dog, NVIDIA. I That's great. Get, I don't know if you ever get that. But Sumit Singh came on the show at 19. He goes, look, this is ridiculous. My stock is about to, you know, I'm doing great. CEO of Chewy. And then uh, what? Uh, Ryan, uh, the the uh, Royal Security comes in at like 20, 25. Where's, yeah. where's Ryan on that? Nowhere. He's not involved in this company. He's not at all. No, no. Ryan Cohen runs GameStop, but he's not even on the board of Chewy he's any elusive. longer. He's elusive. So it is an interesting move by, he, he by, the, well roaring, that. He by did, the roaring kitty. Did Ryan do well on that? Uh, Beth, Beth, he, 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 yes, I had he a couple people on the board. I don't think he spoke to. He had people on the board. I don't think he spoke to. He bagged everybody. Well, I, I do agree with what Jim and David said at the start of this clip when they said that many of those on the congressional committee during the GameStop hearing were very uninformed about the situation with GameStop and uninformed about the financial markets in general. At the same time, many of those very same members also receive large donations from Wall Street, so perhaps that has something to do with their apparent unawareness of the situation and their lack of meaningful action. I'll let you decide. Individual investors remember the events of January 2021. Individual investors, each of their own volition, did their research and called short sellers bluff. And when individual investors were winning, Wall Street abruptly changed the rules in favor of over-leveraged short sellers and broker-dealers who had failed to properly manage their risk. This was no ordinary trading halt. Buying was prohibited while selling was still allowed. And of course the price of the stock had nowhere to go but down. The events of January 2021 and following reveal to much of the public that the financial markets do not function on true supply and demand dynamics. As long as market makers are able to create, quote, infinite liquidity, in the words of Doug Sifu, then we do not have true supply and demand in the financial markets. A market maker that doubles as a hedge fund has the ability to quite literally target a company by shorting that company's stock on the hedge fund side of their business while simultaneously flooding the market with quote-unquote liquidity of that very same stock. Ultimately, liquidity means a greater supply of shares. And this is basic supply and demand. When the number of shares artificially increases, the price of the security decreases. And the end result is that the price of that security is not an accurate reflection of true supply and demand. This is a very real problem, and this goes far beyond just GameStop. This issue affects thousands of securities. It's a problem that plagues the entire market. And then we have many other problems, including rehypothecation in the securities lending market, payment for order flow, individual investors' orders being routed off exchange to non-transparent dark pools, and the list of problems just keeps on going. I'll briefly mention Keith Gill, aka Roaring Kitty, and reiterate that I don't think he has done anything wrong. He purchased positions with his own money, he occasionally shares his opinions online, and he posts memes. Keith is free to invest and trade in the public markets like everyone else, and he is free to express his opinions and post memes like everyone else. Of course, the recent lawsuit against Keith was voluntarily dismissed by the plaintiff without prejudice. It's important to note that the lawsuit was dismissed without prejudice because this means that the lawsuit can be brought forth again at some point in the future. As I've said in multiple videos recently, I believe the accusations made in the lawsuit are immaterial and absurd. And it's important to remember this in case the lawsuit is brought forward again at some point in the future. As for Ryan Cohen and the situation surrounding Bed Bath & Beyond, I don't think he did anything wrong. You may remember not too long ago that the BBBY lawsuit against Ryan was dismissed. And as for GameStop, remember that Ryan has refused to accept a salary from GameStop while serving as the company's CEO. He bought GME stock with his own money, and as he has said in the past, either the company turns around or he goes down with the ship. With this in mind, I think it's safe to say that Ryan's incentives are very much aligned with investors' best interests. Right now, GameStop has solid leadership, narrowing losses, and roughly $4 billion in cash. In the immediate term, the company is working to reduce costs and focus on profitability. This means a smaller network of stores with an assortment of higher value items that fit into GameStop's trade-in model. A great example of this is GameStop selling graded cards, Pokemon cards, sports cards, Magic the Gathering cards, etc. 
GameStop is also offering unique controllers and other physical collectibles that are difficult or even impossible to find at other retailers. And GameStop's push into the collectibles market appears to be going well. They are getting a lot of attention online from collectors who previously were not involved with GameStop at all. Additionally, I noticed that web traffic to GameStop's website has been steadily increasing over the past three months, which is a very good sign. And while we're speaking about collectibles, I'm curious to see if GameStop relaunches their NFT marketplace at some point in the future since the SEC appears to be taking a much more favorable stance toward Ethereum recently. Regardless of that, GameStop is pushing forward into the collectibles market and many collectors are taking notice. Ultimately, I want GameStop to survive, thrive, and reinvent their business model in a meaningful way. GameStop means a lot to me personally, and I'm also tired of companies being targeted by large firms on Wall Street, their stocks shorted into oblivion, their reputations tarnished by false short and distort campaigns, and ultimately their ability to raise capital destroyed forcing them into bankruptcy. I'm tired of it. That's why many people, including myself, support GameStop. At the end of the day, what individual investors want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want individual investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges' better private feeds, which is currently only available to the large firms on Wall Street. We want short sale data to be reported in real time. We want an end to excessive amounts of failures to deliver, and we want entities who fail to deliver on their obligations to be held accountable. We want an end to payment for order flow due to the insane conflicts of interest it creates. There's a reason why so many other countries have already banned it. We want the exchanges to be not-for-profit utilities as they once were. The exchanges becoming for-profit ventures has created so many conflicts of interest at the expense of individual investors. We want increased competition among market makers. And we want all of individual investors' orders to be routed directly to lit transparent exchanges rather than opaque alternative trading systems known as dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.